Hello, and welcome to Library Research Basics from Musselman Library. This presentation is intended for spring semester 2020, and I'm Carrie Phillips on the library staff, here to talk to you about some basic approaches to library research. Perhaps your assignment is to write an essay or a paragraph or a paper to answer a research question. Research questions might look like these. Should the Electoral College be replaced with a national popular vote? What are social and ethical concerns related to fast fashion? How does test anxiety affect college students? Is prison overcrowding a problem in the state of Ohio? You have a question and you don't know the answer to it, and so you're going to do some research and try to find the answer and then explain the answer through an essay or a paper or whatever your assignment is. Or maybe your assignment is to create a position statement where you, instead of having a question, you make a statement that takes a particular stance on an issue, and then you lay out a defense of that stance by collecting evidence uh, through library research and then putting it into an essay that defends that position. Position statements might look like these. A vegetarian diet is more environmentally responsible than a diet which includes meat. The voting age should be reduced from 18 to 16. The Electoral College leads to unfair elections and should be eliminated in favor of a popular vote. Black Friday sales start too early. So a research question is simply that. It's a question, and you may not know the answer, and you're going to try to track down the answer and find it through library research. A position statement might be a little bit trickier because maybe you don't know for sure the position that you want to take is true or not. And so the process becomes trying to find evidence to support the stance that you want to take and then lay out that defense in your essay or paper. Both of these kinds of challenges can be resolved through library research, and library research is necessary for both of these kinds of assignments. So I'm going to talk a little more about how you should approach that. Let's first, though, talk about the concept of keyword. Keywords are the words, phrases, and terms that we use to describe whatever it is that we're researching, whether it's a question we don't know the answer to, or it's a position we're trying to defend. Keywords could be concepts, they could be people, places, or dates related to your issue. They might be words that experts use to talk about the issue. Uh, synonyms and related terms can also be useful when thinking about keywords, as can broader and narrower words. And acronyms and abbreviations can be helpful too, especially if there are some that are closely related to the issue that you're researching. Concepts can be single words, and they can be short phrases. Single word concepts are like the list on the left. Corruption, privacy, poverty, ethics. Phrases can be usually two to three words, and those words mean something very specific when they are next to each other in the order that you see them. So for example, we might know what trauma is generally, we know what a brain is, and we know what it means to be injured, but when you put traumatic brain injury those words together in that order, that means something very specific. And so searching on relevant phrases can be useful to reveal evidence to support your position or to help you answer a research question. People can refer to named specific people, and so I have a list of names you may recognize on the left, but people words can also describe groups of people or populations of people, like students or influencers or teachers or children. Place words could be named specific places, like countries or states or regions of a country or even a particular location like Disney World. Place words can also be more descriptive, talking about a type of institution, a type of region or place, um, or a kind of geographic area. So hospitals, schools, cities, farms, deserts, rural and urban. Acronyms and abbreviations, as I mentioned before, can be useful, particularly if there is one of those that's very closely related to your topic of research. 
Uh, we may know uh, just by hearing EPA that that means Environmental Protection Agency, but sometimes when using library search tools, it can be important to search on both the acronym and the full name of the acronym spelled out. So how do we search for articles that support or are related to a position statement or a research question? We can use keywords to do that work in library search tools. So let me show you some examples of what I mean by this. Here's a position statement. A vegetarian diet is more environmentally responsible than a diet which includes meat. Look closely at your position statement and try to isolate the key words and phrases, and you'll see that I said keywords there. Identify those very important short phrases or words that really get at the most important pieces of your position statement. So vegetarian diet means something specific when those two words are next to each other. And something being environmentally responsible, that's an idea that's important to this position statement and that we need to investigate more. And then the diet, which includes meat, I highlighted the word meat because that's kind of the opposite issue here that we're looking at. So we can take those main ideas that we've identified and then generate additional keywords by thinking about words that mean the same thing or close to the same thing or creating more more words that fit those lists of other kinds of keywords that would be connected. So you can see here on the slide, I have some other words listed under vegetarian, which mean kind of the same thing or close to the same thing. And the similar, I've taken a similar approach across with the idea of being environmentally responsible and the idea of meat, um, getting more specific like beef, pork, or chicken, but also thinking about words like livestock or animal protein as another way to say meat. Here's a research question. Should the electoral college be eliminated in favor of a national popular vote? If we isolate those main ideas, we can see that electoral college is a, an important concept here. Um, the question is asking whether that should be eliminated, so we need to isolate the idea of eliminating something. And then national popular vote is something very specific and kind of, again, an opposite. Um, we're, we're talking about stopping one thing in favor of doing something different, and so we're going to isolate that other second different thing. And so we take those main ideas and transform them into lists of additional words and phrases that mean something similar uh, or close to the same thing. Um, this one's a, a kind of interesting one because we need to talk about the idea of elections. And that word wasn't exactly um, appearing in the research question. And so keep in mind, sometimes you'll have uh, a main idea that's almost suggested rather than being... Um, officially or, or, or um, explicitly included in your research question. Another kind of keyword that may be important for you to keep in mind, depending on the type of research question or the type of position statement you're, you're investigating, are these ideas of concept developers. And that's my word. I'm not sure if that's the best kind of umbrella name for these kinds of words. But I'm, I'm trying to get at words that talk about a relationship between two or more concepts that are wrapped up in your question or in your position statement. So words like perception, understanding, awareness, change, evolution, influence, target, um, dependence, resistance, habit, affect, and effect, relationship, result. So these are a little bit nebulous, a little bit fuzzy, and may not be um, as easy to understand, but sometimes these words can be important when trying to search for library resources that will either help to answer your question or will help to defend the position that you've taken. And then finally, if your main idea or your research question or position statement has some element of either two sides, pro and con, or there's some piece of controversy that's there, incorporate those kinds of words in your keyword list. Um, include controversy or debate or argument or pro and con in your list of keywords. 
And then in the end, after you've generated this list of keywords, you're going to use that list to start building searches in library search tools. So take a look at my next video, which will go through some examples of what that looks like and show you how to use a few selected library search tools to put this into action. You can use the library's website at www.bluffton.edu slash library to find more research tools that you can use um, to help answer your research question or work on your position statement and position essay. Thanks for listening.